uh, Jacob, can we talk about your journey into, into rowing and, and w how that story goes and what it was like getting into, yeah. the, into the boat for the first time? Well, I kind of got into rowing sort of by chance or by fluke. I ran into a buddy of mine in the grocery store, who's also in a wheelchair, that uh, I was kind of in between, like I didn't have a sport at the time. I was just sort of training on my own and just kind of trying to figure out where I wanted to go in my athletic career and ran into him. And he said that the Saskatoon Rowing Club was putting on a come have a go day. And that was for indoor rowing in like end of October. So I just decided to go and give it a try. And I sort of just stuck with it and got into the boat that summer, which would have been like last summer. And the boat was awkward and kind of weird to figure out at first, but rowing on the river here in Saskatoon was just quite the quite the place to learn. I got to be out there every single day and we had, were pretty fortunate weather-wise. So I just kind of, I don't know, I enjoy, I enjoy the training. I enjoy the hard work that comes with rowing. That's uh, I think not a very common trait for many people. <laughs> Something that they say rowers got to be a little bit strange. So I, I definitely fit that bill, I think. Well, uh, it's my plan. I'm going to be in Paris covering the Paralympics. So I, I, I hope and I plan to see you there, Jacob. I know so many Canadians are cheering you, you on. Your tenacity and resilience is remarkable. I know you uh, took part in para ice hockey, adapted water skiing. Uh, you continue to show a desire to want to be involved in athletics. How important has that been for you throughout all of this? Well, being an athlete is a huge part of my identity and who I am. I've been an athlete since I could walk, basically. So the crash and being in a wheelchair now didn't change that for me. I was kind of very early on, yeah, I wanted to get back into ice hockey and it never really worked out. And I moved on to something else, got into water skiing and then stuff happened there. And just, I don't know, I just keep was always trying to find that thing that was the perfect fit for me again now on this new side of sports in the adaptive sport world. So I chanced into rowing and it's really been a good fit for me so far. I've really been enjoying it, the, the community around it too, and the sport itself, I've been finding my home for sure. Uh, I have spent a lot of summer nights on the river in Saskatoon and it is a wonderful feeling. Uh, can you describe to me, Jacob, what it's like to be on the water, whether it be water skiing or rowing, that feeling of freedom and just gliding over the water? Yeah, one thing about water skiing and now rowing too is it's a sport where you really, one of my old teammates used to say, you leave your chair at the dock or leave your disability at the dock. You get to go out on the water and do things that not everybody else can do for sure. And it's a very, like you said, freeing experience to be out there and on the on the water training during the summers i'm out there with the other high performance athletes and everybody's everybody's out working and it doesn't feel like like you said leave the disability at the dock and i just get to go out and perform and be an athlete and do my thing uh outstanding you mentioned uh the community around you since the uh the crash how how have you stayed in touch uh, jacob uh, with with some of your teammates with people who would have been touched by this, what what have this uh, past six years been like for you and and the community around uh, all of that since the crash? Well, I'll start with home because I'm from Humboldt, so the city itself has stood behind me incredibly. I get every time I go back home to see mom and dad, there's people out in the community that check in and see like ask how I'm doing. And the whole city of Humboldt has stood behind all of us and me especially being a local and my whole family being from there i get tons of support all the time and i hear from many people whether they are family or just friends that uh, i get tons of support there still now and the guys uh we keep in contact all the time we try to get together as many of us as we can once a year i think uh Coming up here on the anniversary, we're actually going to try to get together here, which is nice that we get to see get to see most of the guys. Not everybody, I think, is going to be able to make it, but that happens as you get older and people get busy with in their lives. So, but we stay in touch for sure, and I think that's really important because 
those guys that the survivors are the ones that get it, right? We were, we were all there that day. And we continue to support each other today still. Uh, it is inspiring, no doubt, and you, you all sh should be so immensely proud. I get the pleasure and honor of speaking to you, uh, Jacob, and, and I know there are thousands of Canadians who would love the opportunity to meet you and, and to talk to you and, and cheer you on, and they're going to be supporting you throughout all of this. What do you say to Canadians? Because I, I can hear from you that it has meant a lot that they've had your back, that the, the city of Humboldt has had your back. But what do you say to Canadians who are so excited and, and proud of you? I mean, it sounds simple, but to just say thank you, it, uh, it means a lot. I'm very, uh, very proud to, to wear the Maple Leafs like I did in Rio, and hopefully I get to many times moving forward in the future.